Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and a couple of Sonos products landed in my mailbox today and these are what you can see in the picture. So one is the uh, Sonos new Zigbee motion sensor and we also have a uh, Sonos Basic Release 4 and we have also a new S-Mate Extreme. And as I said, I received them today, so I think I'm just going to do a quick video and I'm going to come back to some of these aspects a little bit later as I have more time to test them. But what I want to talk about today is the motion sensor, because I think that's, uh, you know, fairly new. I mean, we did have a motion sensor from uh, Sonoff, a Zigbee motion sensor, but this is different. So I think it's going to be interesting. And the reason this is different, because... Um, it is not using the regular PIR motion sensor that uh, uh, detects body heat, but it uses radar. And as far as I can tell, all the new motion sensors are using the radar technology because uh, what they basically do is they, you know, send a lot of uh, radar signals in their room and they measure the, you know, the bounce of that signal. And uh, just as like, you know, aircraft, ra aircraft radars work, they can detect, you know, moving objects uh, because uh, the radar signature or the, uh, the frequency of the return signal changes. So they can tell if there is a movement in the room. And this is all fine and good, but the real importance about this is that they operate uh, at a much higher frequency than, you know, just the infrared sensor that are looking at infrared. And I, I don't quite remember where I got this uh, information, but I think this uh, Sonophone uses a 6 GHz radar, which is not the highest frequency radar because I've seen like 12 and 24 GHz uh, sensors as well. The main importance about these is that the higher the frequency, the smaller motion they can detect. So I have seen um, that, uh, well, claims that these like 24 GHz uh, radars, you can just place it under your bed and it's it is able to uh, detect presence by, you know, your chest uh, moving up and down as you breathe when you are sleeping. So obviously I would expect that the 6 GHz is not going to be that uh, um, precise, but it would be a type of presence sensor that would be able to detect your presence even if you are just sitting in the in your room, let's say you're watching TV, but you're still making like, you know, very small subtle movements, probably not as subtle as like, you know, sleeping, but like, you know, obviously, you know, blinking a little bit, moving your head, things that the PIR motion sensor wouldn't be able to pick up. So I think that's why it's going to be interesting. Other than that, it's Zigbee. Yeah, we had Zigbee sensors before. And again, probably the other difference is what you can see from the uh, uh, image as well. It has a cable. I think we got used to the fact that uh, Zigbee sensors, well, they can be cabled or, or battery powered. And then all, all of the motion sensors that I have seen uh, so far are uh, battery powered, but this one is cabled. I'm not really sure about the reason for that. Maybe they try to come up with a battery motion sensor, but um, the battery life wasn't good enough and they decided that they are going to just use power one. Maybe they can keep it smaller as well. As you can see, it's a fairly small unit. Uh, but um, I mean obviously the cable makes it a little bit bulky and this is not a particularly small USB cable I mean the connector itself and the cable is um, like I would say regular and for that reason I think uh, installing and mounting could be a little bit of a challenge I mean obviously you have to think about ahead where you would place it especially if you are building a, a new house because then at least you can hide the cables and if you already you know want to install it in, in an existing house then yeah so hiding the cable is probably going to be the challenge maybe if you look around in aliexpress or your local shops you can find a usb cable usb c cable which is uh, you know much shorter and uh, sorry i would say thinner and probably the uh, the connector is also shorter or maybe i can think about a connector which is like a 90 degree connector so it can you know it can come back and then you can just uh, you know hide it along the wall but um, yeah so that's something that I would leave you for consideration I already showed you the the device and um, I mean there is not much else that I can do I can show you so this has this uh, unusual cylindrical shape with a sphere on one end and a dome uh, which is protecting the sensor and you also have this base which has a magnet so you can just snap it on you can just uh, move it around 
so you can um, you know uh, orient it the way you want it and of course there is a little bit of a drag which the uh, the cable presents so uh, that's probably one more reason why you want to look for a, a very light USB cable. I mean, after all, this is only power, so it can be, you know, quite light. And there is a button here which you would only use for, um, you know, getting into pairing mode. And then it has an LED indicator that will show you if uh, various statuses if it's connecting to the Zigbee network or if it has some issues uh, for connecting. And that's it. And in the box you get some screws and a, a double-sided tape. And as you can see, there are screw mounts here. So if you want to mount it on the wall, uh, I mean the base, then you can do that. And on the box, you're not really getting anything else uh, other than these. So there is a compartment for the unit itself and then there is a separate compartment for the USB cable. By the way, the USB cable is a fairly long USB cable. At least I can, I can say that as a positive. So if you want to uh, place it where uh, the, you know, the charger or the socket is, is, let's say, one and a half meters away, I would say probably this is about a one and a half meter cable. And by the way, just for size comparison, let me show you the um, the old Zigbee motion sensor. So it's not bigger, it's just different size. I mean, okay, it's a little bit bigger, but it's more or less the same thing, but it's, uh, it's a different form factor. Okay, so let's look at how this works in the in the evening application so this is zigbee i'm pretty sure it works on with the ihost as well but i wanted to test it with uh, the um, you know the evening app first and actually i use my sorry my son of ns panel pro to uh, as a zigbee gateway and um, I mean, you know, installing it is fairly simple. I mean, on the NS Panel Pro, you can just uh, uh, you, uh, select Add Device, and then uh, as soon as I turn this on, it has gone into pairing mode, and then it paired the device. So it was very, very quick. It also has a QR code, so now in the new evening application, you can just scan the QR code, and then it would automatically go into the, uh, it would do the whole pairing process, but you can just do the old-fashioned way as well. And then on the NS Panel Pro, uh, I think it's really difficult to show this one, but it shows that this is the SNZB06P. And um, what it does, it's when you go into the details that it shows that a person detected and it shows all the, the times when a person is detected. So that's what you get on the NS Panel Pro. And if I show you the evening application, you can see that my um, SNZP06P is also here. And then it shows that at the moment there is a person detected. And I can go into the history and it shows all the various detections. And if I go into the settings, then I have two things that I can do. So there is a sensitivity, uh, so I can just uh, change between low, medium and high. The default is medium. I left it on medium at the moment. And the duration. So this is when it's going to report no presence. And as you can see, you can, well, you can set it to zero minute, but it doesn't have seconds. So it says report no one uh, present after a specified duration of time. So it will wait at least one minute after it no longer detects presence before it detects that there is no presence. Maybe I can bring it down to zero seconds, then it's going to be immediate. But as I said, um, I want to, I, I need more time to test this, all this functionality. But you can see that the, uh, you can go all the way up with the, uh, with this delay. That's sort of like the no person detection delay. So I guess if you bring it down to, let's say a couple of hours, then, you have to be away for a couple of hours for it to report that there is no person detected. And that's pretty much it. I mean, this is all you get in the in the application or in the device settings, which I mean, it's fine. And I have to say that based on the very limited uh, testing that I have done, it's basically this is up and running for the last couple of hours. What I have definitely noticed that as soon as I'm in my office, I'm sitting in front of the computer, I am working, uh, I put the sensors on a wall, which is about like a meter away from me. And whenever I was here 
and even if I was just looking at my phone or the screen, it would just still report that there is a presence detected. So I think for from a short distance, it is um, like even it detects us like a sitting person. So there is no issues with that. And actually, but you can probably see in the picture, I have hooked up a, well, actually the the son of basic that you can see the, the box of in the beginning of the video and it's hooked up to this lamp which is lit at the moment but it's hard to tell and um, so this is my visual feedback if it detects uh, presence because you know this is a sensor you can't really do much with it in itself so you need to set up some sort of automations so what I have done is I've gone to the scenes and I've created two scenes so the first one is presence detected and it says that is if the SNZB06P uh, has a person present, then it's going to run the automation. And the other thing which I forgot to say is uh, it is actually mentioned in the box. Um, you can see that that besides the radar sensor, it has also a light sensor. But the light level that it senses, it's not visible on the screen, not visible in the app or anywhere. And um, as you can see, when you are creating a scenes or, an, you know, like an automation trigger, you can select that I want to trigger that a person is present or a person is present in a dark room or in a light room. I have no idea what dim and bright means and you can't really set it. So you just have to rely on the, you know, the factory details. Actually, I would have liked a, um, you know, separate actions just using the light sensor because that also has its merits in automation. So uh, maybe I want to set up an automation when it gets dark, maybe um, lower the blinds, turn the lights on, even if uh, a person is not detected. I think that would have been nice, but um, I guess this is primary motion sensor. So the first automation I created is that when a person is detected, then it switches on my son of basic. Uh, and this is what you can see here now. And I obviously created another, um, another scene when there is no one present. So motion is no longer detected or I wouldn't say motion. It's like more like a human presence is no longer detected. Then it switches off the, the basic. And again, you know, just a really quick summary of what I have experienced in the last couple of hours then as I said it's always works when I'm here as I walk into the room um, probably as I walk through the door the light would come on within one or two seconds and because these are based on scenes that are working in the cloud I can't really tell whether the sensor is slow or the whole you know cloud communication takes that much but I guess it doesn't really matter because uh, if it takes about one or two seconds for me, probably it's going to take one or two seconds for you as well for these scenes to, to react. So the, the sensor to detect motion sends the data to either the Zigbee Hub or the NS Panel Pro. That goes up to the cloud to trigger the action or the scene, and which will come back to another device to turn on. So obviously that takes time. But I think it's still reasonable, and if, as I said, every time I walk into the room, the light comes on, and as soon as I'm here, the light stays on, and you can see the one minute delay, so if I just go out and come back, nothing happens, but if I go out for, let's say, two or three minutes, then by the time I come back, I notice that the, uh, you know, the light come on, because, well, mostly because I hear the click. So it is working. Uh, it is definitely working very well in the small room and I need more time to test it in different environments, you know, play around with the sensitivity, see how it performs in a larger room, let's say in a living room when there is more space, how long it takes for it to detect a person and, uh, you know, keep the presence detection on. If you are interested in that, then definitely stay with me because there is going to be a follow-up video when I compare this and probably I'm going to compare it with the old uh, motion sensor, the PIR motion sensor, so you can really understand the difference between them. And what I didn't mention in the beginning of the video, probably I'm going, just going to leave it in subtitles, that uh, this new device goes on sale on the 16th of October, so this is brand new. but. Um, here is the you know the quick review uh, of 
what it does, how it is different from the previous sensor. I hope by the time this video is edited, I will be able to leave a purchasing links in the video description. But I think that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.